Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And this is going to be one of my favorite weeks to play because we are going up against our former team last dynasty we were with the indiana hoosiers this week we get to go against them so all of my former players i get to see them on the other side but before hopping into that i want to get a little deep with you guys so i want to show you guys like my favorite formations and mainly why i sub different people in in certain formations and i don't really talk about it too much but Here's a formation that I run actually a lot. It's shotgun spread flex. And this is a nice formation because look, the running back is lined up a little bit behind the quarterback, which allows halfback dives and as well as options. So I don't really run too many options, mainly because I like the athletes that we have. I don't really need to run option with them. And I don't like to overpower. I don't like to over abuse the option at all. So I do use a lot of halfback dives. So on this formation here, you can see Herman Rogers number 12 is lined up in the slot here, but I'm gonna actually switch that. I'm gonna put Ben Miller here because on a lot of these plays that I run out of this, out of this formation are gonna be run plays. So I need a guy that can block there in the slot, open up a lot of room for Brown to run. So like a formation like this, I'm not gonna run too many balls, out, too many plays out of this uh, calling run plays so i don't really need to sub him in but like play like formations where i have you know a running back kind of in a running formation kind of like this one so another one tray offset tray open offset i do have ben miller in the slot there if you look at him here he's in the slot so he's a tight end he can block a lot better than herman rogers can so i take herman rogers out of the slot there uh slot ben miller in there and you know i like herman rogers i like when he's in the game but he is a blocking liability if you notice a lot of my run plays get stuffed because the guy gets through i mean the slot corner gets through and he gets stuffed in the backfield or it could be broke broken for a long gain ends up being a shorter gain so that's what we're going to show you really quick. Just a little quick snippet, but we're going up against Indiana. So let's look at them. They're 1-0 at this point, and not too many teams have played. We're, we're one of the few teams that have played two games in the season because we don't we didn't get that first uh, week by. So as you can see, we're, we're number eight in the nation in points per game, 44, which is actually a lot. But if we look at Indiana, let's look at their first game. Let's see who they played. Uh, I, I think I passed it. Let me go back one. So it looks like they played North Texas 1, 15 to 14. So I don't know how good Indiana is. But look, Peyton Ramsey is at uh, quarterback for them. Two touchdowns, 15 for 31 he was in the first game. Mike Majette is still their starting running back. He ran for 74 yards. Simi Cobb, 66 yards over the uh receiving the ball and then on the defensive side they only zeke walker led the team with three tackles that's kind of surprising and he had a one sack so andre brown as well in their secondary so this is gonna be a good game good matchup going up against our former team but let's hop into it let's go this game i gotta admit it, it feels pretty weird going up against indiana after coaching them through three seasons so here we go man marquette on the road to indiana so they are coming out with that fire right away. And you know Mike Majette probably has a vendetta against me because I played Devontae Williams over him the uh, for a couple of seasons. So I know he's looking to get his revenge. But right away, Peyton Ramsey to Simi Cobbs. And that was a combination that I had formed throughout the dynasty and look at that right away they drive down the field like it's nothing and they go up seven nothing so alex brown getting the ball to start out the game i gotta get him the ball you know i have to he's dynamic and ben miller i want to get him more involved i think he's finally starting to warm up to this new offense especially with getting him in on certain packages now so i'm getting him involved early on in this game getting his confidence up because i know i'm gonna need him later in this game so here we go on the jet sweep fake. Cohen's going to roll outright, throw to the outside. Remember last game, I tried that and it was interception. This time I throw to Herman Rogers and he keeps the feet in bounds. So Alex Brown getting past the 50 here, getting the ball up the middle. So on a play action, first and 10, Herman Rogers getting involved one more time. And I kind of like Herman Rogers in that fourth receiver role because he fills in nicely when he comes in at the slot position so Dwayne Elliott you've seen his name a few times in the last couple games and he gets in and Glenn Hall 
finishes it off gets into the end zone and this is a 7-7 game here in the first quarter and Mike Majette getting the hand off that time giving a mean stiff arm that time to LaRue Wiley so on a first and 10 once again Peyton Ramsey throwing to the outside and that's another guy that's probably upset Nick Westbrook he was buried on my depth chart I didn't really get him the ball too much but on the next play Simi Cobbs wide receiver screen great blocking on that one and Simi Cobbs gets inside the 15-yard line. So now they're facing a third and goal a couple of plays later. And Rams are going to have all day to throw. And he's going to find who else but Nick Westbrook. All the guys that I didn't play are going to probably come out with vengeance. I mean, they're trying to get some revenge on the coach, their old coach. And Indiana's up 14-7. <laughs> And look at what happens on the first play, giving it to Alex yeah, Brown. Yeah, and that one's yeah. going to be coughed up and scooped and scored. And look who it is. It's Cook Jr., who I never played. I mean, Cook Jr. never even touched the field. Look at all these guys that didn't touch the field versus me. They're coming out, and they are angry. So on the next possession, throwing the body to Ben Miller. And, man, did we miss one that time, Marcelino Ball couldn't keep up with Ben Miller but Cohen overthrows him and on the next play a couple of plays later Cohen cannot get it done so we do have to punt the ball away to Ramsey in this red hot offense look at Ramsey finding time in the pocket throwing across the field and Simi Cobb look at that he had a wide open lane to the end zone and he cannot keep his feet in bounds but no problem Mike Majet is angry he is running with a purpose this game getting into the end zone and it is 28 to 7 in the first quarter so here we go cohen's got to do something here on offense so on a first and 10 on the first play he's throwing to yet another guy that was buried on my depth chart willis i mean are you kidding me all these guys that weren't even in when i was playing with the indiana hoosiers that i kind of had on the back of the depth chart are getting in and getting some playing time and look another one water cutter remember water color cutter was replaced by baby gronk joe richard and he's coming out upset too too it, this is a crazy eventful game i mean all the guys that are not that weren't doing anything in my old dynasty are just coming through but alex brown has something to say he gets a wide open lane up the field getting inside the five on the 50 yard run on that one and guess who glenn hall comes in runs over andre brown for the touchdown that time and at least we are getting on the board but we are down 21 points in this first quarter to our former team and they are just coming out with vengeance Ramsey's finding water cutter once again over the middle, but on a third and 11, sending a blitz this time, throwing deep, but Kamara Bruh. Rivera drops a pick. But, I mean, I guess it's a good thing that he dropped it because then we forced the punt. We could have had bad field position on that one. So we do get the punt here, but on a second and four, they send the blitz. They send a cover zero blitz, and Ben Miller, what a route that was. He bakes Cook on that one and gets open for the touchdown and that's going to be the longest play from scrimmage this year for the marquette golden eagles and it is back down to a two Bruh. possession lead and kamara rivera once again dropping yet another interception he's got to come up with these i'm going to need him late in the game to make some of those plays and then speaking of making plays larue wiley getting in for the nice deflection that time there were a lot of guys to throw to on that one but i Luckily, LaRue Wiley makes a great defensive play. So first and 10, five minutes left in this second quarter. Rolling outright, finding Eddie McCray, who we haven't heard his name in a little bit. He gets the ball for a nice 20-yard gain. And on the next play, Andre Bra Alex Brown, what am I saying? See, I'm getting mixed up between Indiana and Marquette here. Alex Brown gets another receiver, receiving uh, reception there. And he gets to about the 30-yard line. So here we go. First and 10 inside the 40-yard line, getting the ball outside to Glenn Hall, who's spelling Alex Brown on this one. So Alex Brown, I mean, he is such a dynamic guy. It's hard to replace that production, but Glenn Hall is actually doing a great job at that. But look at on the next play, McDowell fumbles the ball and another turnover by this Marquette offense. Two fumbles here 
in this first half and they are just capitalizing off of these turnovers but on a second and ten Mike Majette breaking all oh kinds of tackles God. and we could have had him stopped in the backfield for a third and long play but instead Mike Majette's got other things on his mind as he just continues to plow Bruh. through this Marquette defense and man Mike Majet is angry. He is running with a purpose. And man, look at this. 42 to 21 in my return to Indiana as a coach. And here we are. Cohen's got to show us something. He's got to bring us back. He's got to be a leader. So on a third and eight, throwing across the middle, trying to make something happen, just throwing it up on a third and eight. That was a horrible decision that time by Cohen. No business throwing that one. Should have thrown it away, if anything. But on a second ago, they capitalized. You know that Heisman, they're going to capitalize if you make a mistake. So Mike Majette once again getting in to the end zone and this is a four score lead 28 points a minute and a half left in the first half and here we go Cohen rolling out right finding his receiver this time is Chad Ball for a rare reception Chad Ball is more of a special teamer but he is our first this is our first receiver but he doesn't do much right now but there he's finding Alex Brown is getting the reception that time from Cohen, and Glenn Hall spells him, gets in for the touchdown, and that one is going to take us to halftime. So we're down by 21 to start the half. But before starting this half, let's go over some rules. Remember the rules? Rule number one, do not kick it to him. Chad Ball back to receive the kick, and you know the rules. Chad Ball finds an open lane, and he is not going to be caught on this one. You can't hold him down all game. Remember, he is a gamer, so right away, we make up that 21-point lead down to two scores, but Mike Majette getting open lanes, and I've made an adjustment here. I've switched middle linebackers, Nunez, gets in a lot because this game my linebackers are getting straight gas they're getting gas so that time we bring in finley we bring in finley to replace him and there he is making the tackle that time and we do get them to settle for the long field goal but that one's gonna be good so this two score lead is back up to three scores on the field goal but alex brown i'm a little weary because i don't know if he'll fumble the ball but hey we gotta we gotta give the ball to our playmakers and speaking of playmakers Oliver getting a rare jet sweep here. They weren't expecting that. Kevin Oliver, the freshman, he's only got 82 speed, but he showed some speed on that one, getting a nice 50-yard gain. And on the next play, Ben Miller getting open for the touchdown, and Ben Miller showing what he can do this game, having a career game, and now it's only a 10-point lead for the Indiana Hoosiers. So now it's four minutes left in this third quarter. Throw in deep once again. Bruh. Kamara Rivera has a pick in his hands, and he drops it. So on a third and inches, Ramsey's going to have all day to throw. Throw it to Sear Mack, and he's going to oh give a mean stiff arm that time to Scott Bruh. Tyree, and Tyree is going to be hurt on that play. I mean, I don't know if he's hurt physically, but his feelings are definitely hurt. So the Indiana Hoosiers – Come to the line once again, giving it to Devontae Williams, but there's a flag on the play on the touchdown. And look at this, holding. So we get a break on that one. So now the Indiana Hoosiers are facing a third and eight. And this time, Azad Earl, he's in the game for the first time gotcha, in his career. But this time, LaRue Wiley is going to get to Ramsey and sack him on that play. So they are going to settle for the field goal. And now it's a 13-point lead. Two minutes left in this third quarter, and Alex Brown starting to get going on back-to-back -back carries here. He breaks another one, and this time he's got an open lane to the outside. One man to beat, but Riggins tackles him on that one. 
So here on a third down, getting inside field goal range, Glenn Hall gets the carry. So it's a fourth and two. I got to go for it on this. They send an all-out blitz, and I see an open man and throw it deep, but that one's going to be deflected that time. But look at the options on this. I had an open slant route who was wide open, Chad Ball. But look at the separation that McCray had. If he would have thrown it deep to the back of the end zone, that was a touchdown for sure. But McCray, look, he has to wait for the ball and the Indiana Hoosiers take advantage on the underthrow. So Ramsey comes back out on a third and seven, attempting another screen play. But Mike Majette is going to get tackled before the first down marker. Good play that time by Josh Dunbar. So Cohen, I mean, he's been having a couple of good drives here. And now we're on to the fourth quarter so Cohen's got to show some fourth quarter magic and here he's finding Herman Rogers hold on to that ball across the middle we do not want another turnover on a fumble and on a third and six Herman Rogers gets the ball but look at that spot that spot they give us the first down but I am not complaining because I really needed that one so on a first and ten Ben Miller getting the ball on a play fake that time for another 11-yard gain. And out of third and six, McDowell is getting in Rashawn McDowell. Remember, he fumbled early in the game, and he's making up for it that time on the reception TD. So here we are, down six on a first and 10. Peyton Ramsey, all he's got to do is keep the ball, keep moving the ball like they have all game. But on a first and 10, a couple of plays later, Rams is going to feel the pressure, throw across his body, it. but Vince Cohen is going to be there for the interception. He has an open lane for the end zone, but he's going to be caught from behind by Mike Majette, and what a blunder that time. All game, Peyton Ramsey has been perfect, and the coach does not like that decision by Ramsey. He gives a gift to the Marquette Golden Eagles offense, and here we go. We capitalize up one point here. Four minutes left in this fourth quarter. What a comeback. It was once a four-score lead for this Indiana Hoosiers team, and here they are, second and ten. Giving the ball to who they know best, Mike Majette, and he doesn't get the first down. So on a third and four, attempting the ball to run the ball, Mike Majette, he doesn't get there. So a fourth and three, a big fourth and three. They had three timeouts here. They attempt to run it, and Vince Cohen once again. Another big play this time by Vince Cohen. First the interception, then the tackle on fourth down. So all we have to do is get a few first downs because they have three timeouts left. And Alex Brown getting using that speed to get between the tackles. Here he is weaving through traffic, getting almost to the first down marker. So on a second and one, getting him the ball. So Indiana's going to have to use another timeout. So they get down to no timeouts here on a second and 11, two minutes left in this game. But Alex Brown gets tackled here. So now we're facing a crucial third and 11. And here we go. What is Cohen made of? Third and 11. Can he seal this game? He rolls out right, finding the sophomore Herman Rogers. He's actually a junior now, and he gets the grab. And that's going to seal the game for the Marquette Golden Eagles. What a comeback that was. What a game that was against a former team. Mike Majet came out firing on. Man, I mean, he just came out guns blazing. And Alex Brown with a huge game on the ground. He also has a big game receiving the ball, 48 yards. He's just an all-around athlete for this offense. And Ben Miller, 125 yards receiving. That's going to be his career high. And Vince Cohen definitely gets the MVP in this one. An interception, a crucial interception, and a huge tackle for loss towards the end of the game. Wow, I mean, what a game. 56-55, to 55, over 100 points scored combined. And, man, Mike Majette, he went off 224 yards. Look at the yards after contact. 121 yards after contact. Seven broken tackles. I mean, he had four on one play. That one play where it was an 11-yard gain on the second down. Man, what a game in the return to Indiana. 
but we pull out the W that makes us 3-0 and in non-conference play. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. What an exciting season it's been so far. Stay tuned because we got a big game coming up.